Welcome to a new teardown video. This time it's another cool product from Radiometer Copenhagen. Wave Analyzer Type FRA3. This one covers about 10 hertz to 60 kilohertz and what it actually does is it can analyze for harmonics so like a quality of sine waves so this is this is basically what it what it does said in a very few words i really like the mechanical solution here so we got two different dials for the input level and then so you crank this all the way up and then you can go a little bit more up right or if you go all the way down that is really really funny way to do it but maybe this has something to do with the isolation of this huge range so of course those the signal goes through one dial and then to another one right and this way you get good great isolation and quality of your input signal and of course you got a variable this i think is pretty cool so you go in broadband mode and hold this in and then you can adjust the level uh, to zero and then you can start your analysis of your uh, the frequency is how clean it is and all that you select the bandwidth and of course you need to go and dial uh, the frequency in uh, for the correct frequency and here is something that i find a little bit funny look at the resolution for this see the so this is hertz and kilohertz should have been in here i think there's a mechanical problem because this one just go around and around and around forever uh, according to the manual, it should actually cover the entire frequency range by just this dial. And, and they say that this, um, the length of this dial is equivalent to 6.9 meters. <laughs> that is crazy. Of course, you also have some other frequency. I don't know what exactly that is uh, yet. And there's also a uh, signal generator. I guess this has something to do. So if this is in zero, it will be the same as this frequency, right? So the frequencies uh, I output here will be, you can connect this to something you want to measure and then input it again. And you can also drive a recorder. And I think there's only one tube in this one. It is 37 kilograms heavy. So you, you can actually lift this from the floor into the table but it's kind of barely you can do that look at the size of this beast and here we go it is a half a meter wide isn't that crazy <laughs> what 33 and if we take it all the way from the back to the to the handles it's 40 centimeters deep yep so that is what it is let's power it up and see if it blows the fuses before we power stuff up we always double check the rear panel so we got some other output generators and frequency in our recorders yay oh there's a fuse in the middle and then you need to take out the fuse and then you can dial the the voltage and uh, those I kind of save those weirdo connectors from all sorts of other equipment so I can plug it in and get started okay I think we are ready to no nothing big 62 watts 40 watts 30 watts Okay, 32 watts. 
So that's it. So I'm not afraid. Ooh, that is good. It didn't change. Oh, we got a little bit of... It looks like it's alive, right? I got no input. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, deep, deep red color. I think it's impossible to show on the video, but it's beautiful. <laughs> All right. So there's, of course, no input, so it shouldn't react on this. I got no clue on what frequency it is at because there's a mechanical fault here. Well, what we could do is just try and input something. Let's go to one volt. This should be RMS, right? And then we'll. Okay, so this is not so this is normal, or you can plus 10 dB. Okay, so I go for one volt, and then I just hit this one, and then let's see if there's any reaction, right? Okay, we got one kilohertz, one volt RMS input. We got signal here. So this gain is working. So I dial this in for one. Of course, it is 6 dB off because we are not correctly loaded. So that is absolutely correct. And look at the frequency dial here. I put this into the most sensitive. And then if I just dial this really, really careful, the signal goes away. So the filters also work. And if I crank this up to a wider filter, see, then it gets less crazy. Oh, I need to dial it down a little bit more. So let's take the widest filter. And then I can take this one. See? Ooh. So then it's easy to find the signals. So that means I think it's actually working. That is pretty cool. There's something mechanical about this that is uh, wrong. And uh, what is this doing here? Not a lot. Yeah. Ooh, the slow meter there. Oh, wow, that is super cool. That works too, but this one doesn't work. So when I push the broadband filter, signal goes to zero. So there's definitely a problem with this switch or the signal path around uh, the filter section. So that is the first bug that I found. Electrical bug here, mechanical bug there. All right, we need to open it. Teardown time. Don't you just love it when it's stuff is easy? Only the four corner bolts, and then you can pull out the internal, the entire unit from its case. But I think this is going to be a two man job. Oh my God. <laughs> we are in, like they say, let's start with the bottom because I lifted it up on the table like that. So it's going to stay like that. I guess that will be a filter box in some really nice shielded um, metal box. This one says 60 kilohertz filter, so it's probably a low pass, right? Let's see some power supply stuff and ooh, the ah, so the mains is nicely covered, so you don't get electrocuted and. Yeah, the input and the... Can't really see a lot of all the mechanic. So we need to open up a little bit more so we can see more about what's going on. Let's take this off and see what is hiding here. So what is this? Transformators or inductors or filters or something? Absolutely amazing. 
the build quality here is just great. So this is the bandwidth switch. Lots of resistors and different sections that it's working with. And look at that, that is uh, well, trimmer capacitors to fine tune something here. And there's also a really nice inductor in again, super shielded case. Hmm. What is in here? So that is the uh, input selector for the yeah for the level or at least half of it. It contains of two different, and one of them goes in its own separate room. So that's really really good for isolation of stuff. And <laughs> this shield plate is 1.3 millimeter steel, so it's heavy. And they used a thin aluminium sheet for that one. Why not here? Try and, you know, cut down on the weight. All those metal plates, they're made of thick, thick steel. Look at that. 1.3 millimeters. And it's all over the place. And this is why it's 37 kilos. Okay, so this is the top. The first thing that I saw got three different modules with the uh, trimmer capacitors, like two and two trimmer capacitors. And there are actually two and two of these. So there'll be six inductors, transformators, resonators, or some sort of trimmable stuff in each of these. And I think there'll be the six bandwidth uh, filters in this area. Maybe this is uh, something. Oh, okay, so this is a first mixer. Great, and you can easily take out that. With germanium diodes and transistors, wow. And here we've got this. That is not working. We need to see if we can open this one. Uh-huh mains transformator and uh, power supply right so we can maybe take up oh it actually says power supply calibrator hmm. and down here look at that trimmer capacitor here or variable capacitor so this gotta be zero point almost nothing picofarad Adjustable, right? Wow. And here we got another one of those. Fantastic shielded. Oh, we can see the mains. Uh, oh, come on, man. Here we go. Shielded cable for mains to the on off switch. That is a very good idea. So I'll see if I can. Oh, this looks like a massive. Oh, all you have to. Oh, it's holy cannoli. Whoa, what the? Oh, my man. This is built as heavy as absolutely possible. Wow. And this one is okay. The gearing is done here on the edge. Wow. That is pretty cool with a little rubber connection to the main edge <laughs> how cool is that and then so this is the capacitor down there is just amazing i think i haven't seen one this big before look at my hand here you can see and this is is this aluminium yes it is I think so. Let's try with a magnet. Okay, yes it is. <laughs> at least, right? But look at... Okay, now it is actually turning! Look at that! It is turning this thing! 
So now it is working. So those are the kilo cycles, right? So five kilo, zero, okay. So here we should, okay, let's boot this up again. Now I wanna see if this works. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I can't remember, I haven't seen anything as nice as this. Of course, if you play with big, big clocks, you have seen <laughs> sport gears or gears like this. Oh, wow. I can't, I can't just let it go. It's, oh, I, I want to, I want to touch it some more. All right. We took the 12 hertz bandwidth and now we dialed in. We still got one kilohertz input and look. This is not, okay, let's, okay, this one needs to go to zero, obviously, right? Everything else is in zero. Okay, let's try again. Here it is. This is very close. Only 100 hertz off, but this is 60 years old and we are very, very close to the end of its capabilities, right? So how about we go, oh, this one is now, ooh. Okay, something is falling off. So how about we just go to 20 kilohertz? So where's the zero? Okay, here it is. So this should be 20 kilohertz, right? And then I click my signal generator, say 20 kilohertz. And then it should, we should expect it to be low, right? Amazing, it's the same level. This is really, really close. I think, see? And, and of course you could easily calibrate this. Just read the manual and just dial something and then it should be accurate again. Wow, it's actually working. That's crazy. Still haven't figured out this one where this goes. All right. Let's try and perform a real measurement here. So what I've done is I've taken, taken a 10 kilohertz square wave so we have to adjust this for zero. So this is my reference input and I adjust this for absolute maximum. So since this is a square wave at 10 kilohertz, so let's go up. You shouldn't see that much at 20. Only a tiny little bit, but if you go to the third harmonic, yep, there's a little bit, right? So this is the third harmonic, minus what, eight or nine dB. Isn't that cool? So we can measure harmonics, and this is exactly what this thing does. You can crank this up 10 dB and get more resolution, right? Ha ha! Isn't that nice? So, uh, that means we we'll, should also be able to measure the second harmonic using that trick, right? Or we can just go even more crazy, right? So now we're 20 dB. Where are you? Nope. That's a little bit weird. I was expecting to see a little bit. Nope. It is nothing. That's a little bit odd. But anyway, frequency range. All right. We're happy. Oh, I found out some more. 
turns off. This is a way to disconnect the fine tuner by simply moving it. And then you can just dial this as fast as you want. Look at how they adjusted the trim capacitor here. And this is in perfect balance. So you can just dial it as fast as you want. Note this thing, it's not touching. This is actually a marker. So when you're doing sweeps, you can get markers. <laughs> and also, since this is in balance, of course there will be a weight difference. So you can just let it go, All right? And it will stay there. So what they've done, I don't know if we can get a picture of that. They added a brass weight, counterweight, to this wheel to compensate. So if you release the screw here, you can turn this because the hole is not in the middle. And then you can fine tune by rotating this for perfect balance when you're dialing around here. Just those cool, cool things. It's amazing how much electronics there is really inside this one. Uh, this is the rear view. We haven't even got to the to the side of it again. Can't wait to figure out how they done this stuff down there. Look at the thickness. Here we got two plates, internal parts and A secret trimmer. I could have loved a little label here, but of course this should be explained in the manual. Input amplifier it says. And what does this board say? Uh, it's really difficult to read. It says second mixer amplifier. Some more nice diodes. And that was the power supply. And look at the right side. Ah, oh, we need some more light. Hang on. So this will be the right side of the case. And it says 118 kilo cycle oscillator BFO mixer uh, BFO amplifier thing. All right. I kind of like this. This reveals they know what they're doing, but what is that? And here, ooh, look at that. It is not connected in any way. Ooh, you, you, that is bad stuff. And also here, I don't like that at all. I think we should take out this board and have a look again here. Ooh. So I'm shy. Took out all the screws. Well, let's look again. Those are the wires for this super, super critical capacitor with almost no change, right? So it goes here and there's added another shield and it goes to this inductor and some parts around it here, right? Let's see if we can just pull this up off the socket real careful. Ooh, yes, I could do that with one hand. Ooh, oy, 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 oy. Let me see if I can put it down here. What on earth is that? Ooh, that is the red wire. So if you cut the red wire, it will explode. It's really beautiful. The PCB layout, plenty of space. Not all this clocked together like you see today. Oh, look at that. I've seen this before. I've actually done exactly this myself. <laughs> so this is how you shield capacitors.
really, really great. This is a super great way to do it. When you got an input signal that needs to go through a capacitor for DC offset um, handling, right? This is the way to shield this entire capacitor. A lot of people in the hi-fi world, they could learn this trick again today. Because they want to use huge, bulky capacitors on inputs. Ooh, because they're so sexy. But they create a big antenna and hum pick up shit. All right, so what is this? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Good words again. That is cable management. So it wasn't anything bad. Okay. I will say I am so sorry I was wrong. This was not a bad thing. It was good. I think we should... Should we have a little peek in here? Yes, we should. Because we've seen those a few places in this beautiful unit. Oh, I want to see what else we got in here. we got some more funny stuff down there. That will just be capacitors for the power supply under that shield. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could drive a tank over this one and it's still not going to bend. I don't know, but this is 10 millimeter thick aluminium. They mean business with this unit. I was trying to unscrew the power supply PCB and see if I could take it out. But I can't because of the large capacitors here. They won't let me pull out the PCB. But then I realized this whole unit is mounted on a hinge, right? I got, we had two screws here and two screws here. So I took them out and what do you know? This whole unit, you can just Take it down like that, and then you can access the entire power supply, and it's still connected. And then you can measure what is going on, and that will be the rectifier. Wow, that is really a cute one. Still haven't found the tube yet. There was supposed to be a tube in here somewhere. Oh, there's a shield with some holes. Ah, okay. So you can access the two trimmers here for an F oscillator. And again, those really cute. And here's the the beast of a capacitor and a shield for. They they really made everything here as good as they possibly could that I must say there isn't any way that I can pull these up because they're connected with wires and solderings and stuff here so this is not meant to be pulled apart quite easily and again this is quite normal for old electronics to have transistors in sockets. That is nice. So you can easily change them. I think the designers, they were used to tubes in sockets, right? So, oh, we're now designing with transistors. Oh, we better put them in sockets. So this is the left side, and I found it! Novistar! <laughs> also in a nice socket. Yep. And that will be, I guess, didn't we already establish this was the input amplifier? Yes. Input amplifier. Exactly as I thought. And this is a great way to have high input impedance. So that is great. And this will be the top side of the input level selector. Yeah. 
And here we can, oh yeah, we can actually see that now. Let's see if we can get some light in here. So those are the two different input level dials. This is the bottom one. That is connected to this really cool. And yeah, now we can actually see that. A really, really sexy way to incorporate in two different dials uh, into one readout. I really like the way that they went all the way to make it really, really nice. Don't you just love it when people understand the single point of ground, how important that is? How many wires do you see on this point? And this is the input, right? So it's, and there's a big, wide, low inductance connection to the chassis here as well, but not through the front panel. No, 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 this is, this is isolated. The front panel is connected here, but this is connected up to the side. I don't know, sometimes the last few millimeters of metal is all that matters, right? <laughs> Separate wires for ground. Beautiful gears. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I want to pull any more apart here in this wonderful unit. We'll just have a little filter in here. I don't know if I can actually pull this apart. How is that done? Yeah, maybe we could. But it's not connected. We are connected, so that's going to be a problem. Rear panel. Oh, so this is isolation as, as well. Again, the different coax and different groundings goes to the source of all signals. Voltage, selector, and input. Yeah. And another filter. I really think those are really nice. Yeah, this is how you did it in the good old days. Two kilo buffer amplifier and the fine tuning 